Hey everybody, I have a huge video for you today. Today we're going to talk about rendering lists in React.js. This can be pretty complex, we'll go through it step by step. What we'll do in this tutorial is create a new component to hold our list. Let's go to our source folder, create a new file. I'll name this component list. This will be a JSX file. To finish creating this component, this will be a function-based component with the name of list then be sure to export it. Export default list. We'll start with something very simple. We'll create an array of fruit. This will be const fruits equals, think of some fruit. For me, I'll pick an apple, orange, banana, coconut, and a pineapple. Let me show you what would happen if we were to return our array. Within our list component, we will return our array of fruits. But we will need to import it. Going back to the app component, we will import our list component. Import list from a location dot forward slash list dot JSX. We need a return statement to be sure you have one we will return a list component. And here's our list. Let me zoom in. It's all one big string. Apple, orange, banana, coconut, pineapple. Heading back to our list component, we need to convert our array of strings into an array of list item elements. We can use the built-in math method to do that. We'll create a new array of list items. The map method is going to return a new array after running it through a function. Const list items equals take our original array of fruits, use the built-in map method, then we'll either pass in a callback, a function expression, or an arrow function. We'll use arrow functions because I like arrow functions. For every fruit in fruits, arrow, meaning do this, we'll create a new list item element that has the text of our fruit, the array item. We're not going to return our fruits array. We're going to return an unordered list. We're going to insert some JavaScript with curly braces. We'll include our list items. It's an array of list items. And here's our array. Whoops, but I forgot to enclose fruit with curly braces. My mistake. There, much better. Or if you prefer, we can turn this unordered list into an ordered list with a pair of OL tags. OL. There, they're all numbered. That's how to render a simple array. If you're working with an array of strings and you'd like to sort this array beforehand, you can use the sort method fruits.sort. The sort method will sort an array in place. However, this doesn't work with numbers because we're sorting lexicographically. We would treat numbers and symbols as characters. More on that later. Let's go over example two. We'll convert our array of strings into an array of objects. Each object will have a name property and calories, calories per serving. So let's enclose all of our elements with then a set of curly braces to make them objects. I'm going to place each of these objects on a new line just so that I can read it more easily. Each of these objects will have a name property. The name property will be set to the original string for our array. The first object will have a name of apple. Let's add calories too, calories per serving. I did a quick Google search of some of the calories per serving for these fruits. I don't know how accurate these are, but they seemed right. Our first object has a name of apple. The calories is set to 95. Name orange, calories, 45. Name banana, calories, 105. Name coconut, Coconut, calories, 159. Name, 
pineapple, calories, 37. All right, we now have an array of objects. There's a few changes we're gonna make. If I run this again, our list isn't rendering. I need to display the name property of each fruit. Fruit dot name property. We have one issue behind the scenes. I'm gonna right click, go to inspect, then go to console. Warning, each child in a list should have a unique key prop. React wants us to assign a key to each list item. Each key should be unique. In my array of objects, each fruit has a unique name. I could use that. We will set the key attribute to equal, include some JavaScript, fruit.name. That warning should go away, which it did. If there's a possibility that two objects can share the same name, you'll want to use some sort of unique ID. In a real world scenario, if you're pulling data from a database, each row of data is going to have some sort of unique ID. So we're going to mimic that. Let's add a new property for an ID. ID will be one for Apple. These will be in ascending order. Orange will have an ID of two. Banana is three. Coconut is four. Pineapple is five. We'll set the key to be each ID. This would be much better than using the name. You can have a naming conflict if two objects share the same name. Like if these were people, you could have two people named Bob. That warning should be gone. Which it is. React would like a unique key for each item, just so it can more easily keep track of items being inserted and removed. Along with each element, I'm going to display the calories next to each element. So we'll make a few changes. I'm going to put these HTML elements on a new line for readability. After the fruit's name, I'm going to add a colon, a non-breaking space character, ampersand, nbsp for a space, oh, then add a semicolon, forgot about that. Then we'll insert some JavaScript, fruit dot calories for the calories of each fruit. I'll make it bold. I'll enclose our calories with a pair of bold tags, which is just B. Now we're going to sort the items in our list. We'll do that before the map method. I'm going to sort our array of objects by their name property. We'll take fruits, use the sort method. The sort method will sort an array in place. We'll write a custom sorting function. We have two parameters, A and B. A for the first item, B for the second. Then we iterate over the entire array. We need an arrow, meaning do something. To lexicographically sort string properties within an array, we can use the following method. We'll take the name property of A, use the built-in local or locale, some people say, compare method, I misspelled that. Yeah, I can't spell. Compare to b.name. That should sort our array of objects by their name property. For reverse order, let me turn this line into a comment. This is alphabetical. For reverse alphabetical order, we just have to replace A with B and B with A. There, pineapple, orange, coconut, banana, apple, with apple being at the bottom. Let's sort by calories. Fruits.sort. This one's easier. Again, we have our parameters, A comma B. Arrow, the calories of A, A dot calories, minus B dot calories. That one's easy. We have pineapple at the top, followed by orange, apple, banana, coconut. This is in numeric order. For reverse numeric order, reverse numeric, or descending, you could say, the calories of B minus the calories of A. Now we have coconut at the top, with pineapple at the bottom with the least amount of calories. 
In this next section, I'm going to demonstrate to you how we can filter objects by a certain criteria. We'll filter anything that's greater than 100 calories. We'll create a new array of fruit that has low calories. We'll create a new array, const low cal fruit equals take our original array of fruits, use the built-in filter method. We'll have one parameter, a fruit. Examine each fruit in our array of fruits, arrow, then a condition. Here's the criteria. Check the calories property of our fruit. If it's less than 100, filter it and add it to a new array. Instead of displaying our array of fruits, let's display our new array of low calorie fruit. Oh, that should be plural, low cal fruits. When we create our array of list items, replace fruits with low cal fruits and any instance of fruit with low cal fruit, singular. So we have three instances of fruit. Let's replace those. Let me clean this up a little. Feel free to pause the video if you need to write this down. We have three fruits that are low calories. The calories is less than 100. Let's find any high calorie fruits. We can just copy this line of code, paste it, but change the condition. Examine the calories of each fruit, filter it out if the calories are greater than or equal to 100. The name of this array will be high cal fruits. Replace low cal fruits with high cal fruits. Replace low cal fruit with high cal fruit, singular. And do that for the other instances as well. There we are, we have two fruits that are high in calories, bananas and coconuts. That is us using the filter method to filter out list items. Let's replace high cal fruits with fruits, high cal fruit with fruit to display our original array. For the next part of this lesson, we're going to transform this list component so it's reusable with different lists. Currently, the way that we set this up is that each list component that we create has its own list of fruit. So we're going to make some changes. Let's cut our list of fruits going to the parent component of app. We'll paste our list of fruits, then pass it as props to our list component. With our list component, we will have a key of items equals, insert some JavaScript, our list of fruits. Let's also add a category key. Category equals, for my category, let's say fruits. Eventually, we'll add an H3 heading. We're now going to send all of this data to the list component, but we have to set up props. Within the list function, we have a parameter of props. We'll access the items of props to get our fruit. We'll create const item list equals not to be confused with list items. List items is what we get after we map it. Item list equals props dot items. And remember that items is our fruits array. Replace fruits with item list. Replace fruit with item. Do that here, here, and here. There's our list again. If you're going to sort or use the filter method, be sure it's item list, not fruits. Because now list is a reusable component. I'll add our category too. That's stored within props. Const category equals props dot category. Currently, we're returning a single ordered list. I'll also include an H3 element. Include some JavaScript. We need curly braces. Add our category. However, with our return statement, we can only return a single element or many elements that are wrapped within a fragment. Let's create a fragment that will enclose all of our markup.
There we are. Going back to our app component, let's create a new list. Just to make sure that our list component is reusable. Let's copy our array of fruits. Paste it. We'll create an array of vegetables. The IDs will be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The name of my first item will be potatoes. Calories 110 per serving. Celery. Calories will be 15. Carrots. Calories 25. Corn. Calories 63. Broccoli. Calories 50. Now we should be able to create a new list component. Within our return statement, we're going to need a fragment again. We'll return a second list item component. The items will be vegetables. The category will be a string of vegetables. Boom, there we go. Here's our second list component. So our list component is now reusable. We can pass in many different types of lists. To make this look better, let's apply some CSS styling. We'll have to set a class name first. Our h3 element will have a class name equal to list-category. Our ordered list will have a class name of list items. All right, going to our CSS style sheet, index.css, let's work on our list category first. Use dot to select a class, list category. I'm just going to run through these real quick. I'm going to make sure I'm zoomed in to 100 because I was zoomed in beforehand. Font size, 2.5 EM. Font weight will be bold. Pick a color. I'm going to stick with HSL values. I'll set the lightness to be 20%. I'll add a little bit of margin on the bottom. 10 pixels. Text align center. I'll add a border. 3 pixels solid. I'll add a border radius to round the corners. And a background color. Pick a color. Again, I'll use HSL. This one I pre-picked already. 185, 100%, 50%. That's not a bad looking color. Pick whatever color you would like. Let's work on our list item elements. We need to select the class of list items, dot list items, select each list item within this class. I'll increase the font size to be 2EM. I'll remove the list style, but you don't have to. List style will be none. Pick a color. Again, I'm using HSL values. I'll set the lightness to be 25%. Text align center. And margin will be zero. All right, now when I hover over one of these list items, I'll apply a hover effect. Take our class list items, take each list item, Access the hover pseudo class. I'll change the brightness. The color will be something a little bit brighter. I'll set the lightness to be 45%. And then the cursor will be a pointer. Yeah, not bad. That's how we can apply some CSS styling to list components. All right, heading back to our app component. What if we have an empty list? For example, with our fruits, I'm going to cut it. We can use conditional rendering to render our list 
only if there's elements. Let's put those back. We're going to write some JavaScript. We need some curly braces. Let's take our array of fruits, access the length property. Is it greater than zero? Question mark. If it is, we'll return our list component. Colon. If it's false, we can return null. Let's do that with our vegetables too. Take our array of vegetables, access the length property, is it greater than zero ternary operator? If it is, return our list component. If not, we can return null. If one of these lists doesn't have any elements, we won't render that component. There is a shorthand to the ternary operator. We don't need to write, or else return null. What we'll use instead of the ternary operator is the and logical operator. We can effectively short circuit the first expression. Then we don't need colon null. It's a little less code. Our list component will always be true because it exists. However, the first expression might not be so if this condition is false, we don't render this. If it is true, we will render this. Let's try that again. Let's remove these elements. We don't display the fruits list component. And we will not display the vegetable list component. This is known as short circuiting. One thing to consider. What if our category is missing? Let's remove our category from fruits. Well, I would like to add some sort of placeholder here. Or what if one of these arrays was missing? Well, nothing displays, not even vegetables. We should add some default props in case one of these properties is missing. So going back to our list component, before we export it, let's set up some default props. Take our component name, list.defaultProps equals, within a set of curly braces, Let's set our category, category property, to be category as a placeholder. If for some reason these components don't have a category, we'll add a placeholder of category, which at least looks better. If we're missing an array, that's a bigger problem. Let me go to inspect, then console. We're trying to map something that's undefined. We have no array to work with. So nothing is rendering. So as a backup, within default props, let's set our items to be an empty array. Items will be an empty array. If one of these arrays was missing for some reason, at least the category is displayed, as well as the subsequent components. At least something will display. Okay, then lastly, as good practice, if we're accepting props, we should set up prop types. I'll walk you through it. If you're just joining us with prop types, if the incorrect data type is passed into props, when we debug, it'll give us a warning. To use prop types, we have to import it. At the top of our list component, we will import prop types from prop types. Take our component of list, list dot prop types equals set of curly braces for our category. This will be a string category colon space prop types dot string. Add a comma for another line. Okay, this is where it's going to get tricky. We have an array of objects. We'll access the items property. Items colon space. Prop types. I'm going to move down a little bit. Dot. We have an array. Array of. We have an array of objects. Prop types. Dot shape method. We have to define the shape of each object. Each object is going to have its own data types. We have a number, string, then number. 
we're defining an object, we need a set of curly braces, id colon prop types dot number, comma for another property. I'll put the next one on a new line for readability. We have a name property, which will be a string, prop types dot string, then calories. Prop types dot number. And that's it. Let's head back to our app component. Our prop types should raise a warning if some of our data is of the wrong data type. For example, let's say that calories is now the string apple. Maybe somebody mistyped it twice. You can see that right here it changed. Let's go to inspect, console, and here's our warning because we have prop type set up. Invalid prop items index zero calories of type string. If we didn't have prop type set up, we wouldn't receive that warning. This may go unnoticed. It is good practice if you're accepting props to also set up prop types. It's a little more complicated if you have an array of objects, but here are the steps. All right, everybody, I know this was a massive topic. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to take some time to study and work with this before moving on to the next topic if you would like. We did cover a lot of material. And well, those are various ways in which we can render lists in React.